Watershed Management Group is a nonprofit based here in Tucson, and our River Network is built of community members such as yourselves uh, within and outside of Tucson. This this is also one of our steward in place events and you can check out all of our events on our website, watershedmg.org. Uh, for this particular event, we're giving you the tools to build your own basin. Whether this is your first basin or you volunteered at one of our workshops, we hope um, that you find this particular virtual workshop helpful uh, to do it yourself. So now without further ado, I will introduce Joaquin um, and we'll get started. So Joaquin is our cultural ecologist here at Watershed Management Group. He specializes in building uh, resilience in diverse communities by enhancing the connections between people, culture, and natural resources. Um, so Joaquin. Okay, uh, thank you, Lauren. And thank you everybody that is here uh, on Zoom. Um, usually we do this thing uh, physically present, but COVID is not going to beat us up. It's very good to have social distance, but it's also very, very good to have physical connection right now. And uh, that's one of the tools we're using to be seeing you, to be connected with the community, to be connected with you. And uh, we thank you for being here with us tonight. And uh, uh, I was chatting with somebody earlier today. I mean, just now, uh, somebody from Santa Fe, New Mexico. There's another person there from Albuquerque, New Mexico. So it's very nice to see, well, the other person is my daughter. Uh, it's very nice to see people from other states uh, joining us. Um, the other day I got somebody from Argentina because we, I teach a class in Spanish. That was pretty cool. So that's the beauty of the Zooms. That's the beauty of the virtual world right now uh, that you encounter very nice human surprises, uh, people interested in other countries, in other states, in other parts uh, of, um, of our Americas. So it's very nice to see that. And it's very, very nice to see your faces uh, here on the screen. Um, so the idea of today is, is to create inspiration <laughs> and is to create a challenge for you uh, to see you can actually build your own basin with a cup of coffee. <laughs> and we're going to demonstrate how that works and on this, on this class. Cup of coffee meaning with what it takes you to finish your cup of coffee, you can actually build a basin. So it's actually very, we can make it very complicated, but also a very nice beginning for the rain garden. You can start small, you can start simple, uh, and you can start something that you can finish in an hour, in two hours, with a cup of coffee. Yeah, maybe you can refill it once or twice, and that's, that's okay. <laughs> But the idea is to finish something within one to no more than three hours, particularly if you have help. Help meaning another person, all right? So that's the purpose of this class, of this talk, of this chat today. And, um, and we're, we're going to modify or adapt uh, some or most of the um, water harvesting principles. How do we adapt it at, at this scale? All right, and this can be a very nice journey to keep expanding this basin that you're going to create after this class, all right? And that expansion will become your wonderful rain garden. You can do it, everybody can do it, and we're going to start small with a basin that you can do in an hour to three hours. And if you like it, which I warn you, this becomes an addiction. You start small and suddenly you want another basin. You want a bigger basin. You want a basin that specializes on grasses. You want a basin that specializes on native plants. That's the beauty of the water harvesting, that inspiration that, that comes to you. And, and you adapt it, you transform it, you create it. Uh, so that's, that's very unique to see your creativity in these systems. Uh, we show you the principles, we show you some of the tools, how it gets done, 
But most of the creativity, and that's what I like working with people, uh, it comes from you. And, it, and everything else, I'm going to build a base into have who knows what. With my wife, I was talking to, to have a base into to create a, a punk Sonoran desert. What are the weirdest sp spiny plants of the Sonoran desert? We have so many weird plants in this wonderful Sonoran desert. So we want to create the punk garden and have some special lights on that. Uh, and, and the names of those, flat, of those plants, some of them are wonderful. Uh, so anyway, I won't go into that. So some steps to maintain in your head as we walk away, as we walk through this, this presentation, is we start with observation. That's kind of the first thing. There's, whenever it rains, when it doesn't rain, you can go out and see what you want to see in your, in your garden with your basin. You start with that. Where are you going to put your base? Whether it gets water from the, from the rain, it gets water from the roof, it gets water from the street, it gets water from the parking uh, spaces, uh, or it gets water from the landscape. So where do you want to start your, your, your basin journey? Uh, select where you want your basin. Okay, I like that corner, or I like this in the middle of the of my backyard or my front yard, or I'm going to take advantage of the flow that I get from the street. Uh, and I'm going to cut the curb or something, bring some of that water to the right of way. That's a little bit more complicated, but uh, select your site, all right? And then, okay, you observe, you have your site, well, start digging. That's all it takes. <laughs> and how much are you going to dig? It just depends on your cup of coffee. Uh, if it is in the morning, and, or, or, you, or you drink. And the digging, usually the basis that we build is anything between four to no more than 12 inches in depth, all right? When you're dealing with 12 inches of depth, it, it, it's very deep, right? It's, it's, it, you need to be cautious on that. You need to think about security. You need to think about supporting the, the, the edges of your basin with rock work. But if you're dealing with a four inch depth, six inch depth of basin, then it's a very nice gentle slope, right? You don't need to deal with anything else, just with the, with the slope, right? We don't want to step, we want to slope. We want to show you that. Um, and you're done digging, Always think of where the water is going to go next, because your basin is going to fill up, regardless of small or big, it's going to fill. So where do you want to send the water next? Always think of that, the overflow, where is it going to go? And make it look, <laughs> I always like to say that, uh, for some people it's hard to grasp that, but I love saying it. Make it look like we didn't do it, like nature did it, okay? Give us an organic look, throw a rock here and there, um, uh, particularly here in the Sonoran Desert. Uh, just make it, don't make it too sharp. Just make it nice and gentle, like it's been there all the time. Uh, create that natural feeling uh, for your basin. That's my liking anyway. And then is the planting. And then make it look pretty and water it. So that's, those are the steps that we're going to see here. And finally, if we can move to the next one, I already talked about observation, but let's stop a little bit there. Uh, for example, imagine, okay, let's stop that one in there with observation. When it rains, where the water hits first in your home, most likely is going to be the roof. So that can be a good source of water. Think about that when you're observing. Maybe another good source of water is a, a, a sidewalk. Maybe another good source of water is the landscape by itself. It's just a sheet flow of water, all right? So at the end, when you're observing, check on where is the water hitting first or where is collecting water. If it is at home, First is the roof, 
and that's where the water is going to start gathering from the roof or from your parkway then you need to guide the water to where you want it the conveyance where are you going to send the water all right and the third step is finally your basin all right is the infiltration is where magic is going to happen the basin does so many good things to you and to nature that is almost magical okay you're creating you're infiltrating water that's that's one of the best things you're bringing additional humidity to your plants additional water to your plants you are um, bringing nutrients to the soil you are diminishing heat island effect particularly if you plant tr shade trees you are diminishing floods particularly if the water stays in the basin uh, instead of going into the street from your roof so so many benefits i mentioned five to six benefits right there and i can continue going all right uh, you're going to have savings on, on, on drinking water. You're going to have savings on electricity because those trees, those plants are going to cool off uh, the surrounding or your house. So you're going to use less electricity to cool your house in the summer. Those type of things a basin can create, all right? Those type of things. Uh, or you're going to create you're going to create something. That's an amazing thing. Something that you didn't have, you're going to create it. And that's very beautiful, all right? So let's go to the next one. Yeah, Joaquin, before we move on, we did have a question. Um, is there a minimum distance that a basin can be close to a home? Yes, it is. Um, if you have big space, the very minimum is five feet, all right? You don't wanna be close to foundations in your house. Right? And there are tricks to do that. But the minimum distance is five. You have space, you can expand it to 10 feet. But five feet is good. And remember, you're going to be excavating. So you're going to have, you're going to create soil. You're going to have soil. If that soil, you put it on a slope against your house on the, on the, on the foundation. So that way the water, you're sending the water away from your house and away from your foundation. Hopefully I'm making sense. So today on this class, on this talk, we wanna make it very, very simple because as I mentioned at the beginning, I am challenging you. So after this class, go out, even if it's dark, go out and start observing. Where are you going to build your basin? Because the challenge, you are going to send, send us a picture. You're going to prove yourself, hey, I did it. Hey, I started. Hey, I have my design. Hey, I cleaned the area. Hey, I'm done with the basin. So we want to hear from you back. And that's part of the challenge after this class. All right. So we, this is, um, this is a, a yard, very regular yard in a lot of lots here in Tucson. All right. So with observation, we notice that water start gathering in this corner. So those blue lines are telling us how the water is moving on this backyard, all right? So water is moving this way and water is moving this way. So we, where is the opportunity to do something? So the opportunity in this case is right in here. Because there is, there is water flowing there already, okay? You don't need to, actually, you don't need to guide the water from the roof to this basin. It was already doing it. And that's the beauty of observation, all right? Particularly when it's raining, you can see a lot of pointers. And when it's not raining, you can see some other pointers, like maybe it's erosion. Maybe the rocks move because it was a lot of current. Maybe it's a little uh, a walkway that the water is creating when it moves. All right, pay attention to those things. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the next one. Uh, so we started looking into the selection and the selection in this case, let's go to the next one. It show us in here, all right? Why? Because the water was going there already. Because the, the water was ponding in there already in that corner. Well, that's the perfect site for a basin, all right? I don't need to do much work. 
water is already coming my way. So I'm going to create a little basin right there. And I'm going to change the look of that corner because it's going to have a very nice little depression. It's going to have some plants and I'm going to make it pretty. All right. Uh, so I'm taking advantage of what the water is already telling me. In addition, we have some other opportunity here to the left of this picture. So we have some water moving in that direction as well. So that's another opportunity. Remember, when you dig soil, when you dig dirt or dig a hole on the ground, you're going to create dirt. Pay attention to that. What are you going to do with that dirt? That's a great tool that you're creating as well. Right? And you can do so many things with that. Don't, don't send it away on a truck. Maintain, is your soil, all right? Maintain that soil and do something else with it. So we selected that corner because water was already going there. Water was already moving there. And it, quite frankly, kind of looked like an empty little corner in there that needs attention, that needs something. So that's how, why we selected that corner. Let's go next. Um, so the next thing, okay, you observe, you saw where the water was coming from, how the water was moving, you selected the site. How are you going to start excavating? Uh, well, mark the shape of your basin. Usually, and we do a lot of those, uh, it's kind of a bean kidney looking shape of a basin. It doesn't need to be like that. Uh, you can, that's the imagination. I've done basins, kind of weird basins, uh, on the shape of flowers on schools, and the shape of tortugas, desert tor tortoise, uh, in, in, in another school. Very simple, just like that. Um, and the shape of, uh, of a kidney, like this one. Uh, and that pointer is actually moving. We mark where the basin is going to go. And more or less, the mark in there is like six feet long and four feet wide. And that's very far from any foundation, right? That's like 15 feet from the house, okay, or 20. Uh, so I marked the basin with the handle of the rake that I was holding at that time. So that's how I mark it. Sometimes you can get fancy, you can mark it with paint, you can mark it with another tool, but the idea is to mark it. So that way, and you can step back and you say, yeah, I can see my basin there, all right? So that's, that's, the, that's marking the basin right in there. And let's go to the next one. And once you do that, the next thing is start digging. <laughs> We clean, in this case, we clean the gravel. So we took, probably we showed that in the video. Let's see the video, what's happening in this video. This is a short video that shows you how we actually start. So we clean the gravel, the gravel is gone, and then we start digging. We start excavating with no fear. We just dig. Before we dig, uh, and this is Lauren's place. Before we dig, I asked Lauren, can you wet the ground? the night or the day before. That makes the digging very, very pleasant. And that way, we don't need to use heavy equipment. Uh, uh, did everybody have a chance to see that? Very simple. And this is the end result of the excavation. Nothing complicated, nothing extraordinary. Well, it is extraordinary because three people in 50 minutes dug a basin. That's the extraordinary thing. I, I was still having coffee there, all right? So my challenge is, is, is moving away very nice. I still have coffee. We already dug the basin. So that's the final look that you want in the basin. As you can tell, there is no steps. It's kind of a nice slope at the edges of this six feet long basin, all right? And so, very shallow basin. This was like uh, no more than eight feet. I think in average, it was five to six. Sorry, I said feet, it's inches. Six, six to eight inches in depth. All right, uh, let's go to the next one. Um, the 
overflow. You always need to think of the overflow. Where is the water going to go next? In this case, we created a shallow area where the arrow is. Mm -hmm. and, and Joaquin, we do have a question related to this. Did you put mm -hmm. the extra dirt against the fence? Mm -hmm. See, you are already observant. I love that. Yes, we did. We put extra dirt against the fence and away and to take the water away from the fence. It has a slope in here. So this is higher in the fence and it's lower right at the basin. So water will enter the basin from the fence. It's not going to be that much, but it's, it, it's some. Uh, so pay attention to that. We're, it's higher along the fence and is lower close to the basin. So water will go into the basin. So the excess dirt, we did two things with it. We put it along the fence, foot corner all the way to here, where the rake, you can barely see the rake here to the left. The other piece of, did it, do, do we show that somewhere else? The other thing we did with the soil that we excavated, we put it in here to the right. I think there's other slides that show that. Uh, yes, what? there are. Okay. Um, and we also have another question. Uh, call blue steak prior to digging. And I should have reminded you, Joaquin, so thank you, Irene, for reminding us. Um, who, who is we supposed to call before digging? Uh, we need to call Arizona 811. We used to call it blue steak. Uh, but if you Google Arizona 811 here at the state of Arizona, that's who you call. Uh, and, and you have two options. You can talk with somebody or you can do it online. All right. And I like talking with somebody because it make it more human. It makes it more, more connected. And sometimes they ask you questions, uh, that you don't know, and they can help you answer those questions. Online, sometimes it, you get confused. Are you, are you going to use explosive? Oh my God, I'm, I don't know. Of course you're not going to use explosives. No, because it's six inches that, you, that you're digging. No explosives here. But they ask you those questions on, on Blue Steak and Arizona 811. That's why I recommend to, to call. Sometimes it can be intimidating. Don't get afraid of the tone of voice. And well, I just need a basin for my rain garden. And watershed management group told me to do that. Oh, you're doing one of those basins. Yes, we are. Oh, okay. Then you need this or that. So they are good people um, and, and, uh, and they answer the phones. Uh, but if you want to do it online, if you know what you're doing, that's, that's another option. All right. But do call Arizona 811. If, in this case, was very safe. Uh, we didn't need to call a private utility locator. I work a lot with schools and sometimes I do need to, I do call them just for my, my own peace of mind. Cause I don't know where utilities are in schools and things like that. So I call a private utility locator and they tell me sometimes they miss, but they told me most of the time where utilities are. So we don't excavate that deep or we don't excavate there or we reshape the basin in a, in a different way. Uh, that's the beauty of the basins. Uh, but yeah, call Arizona 11. If you're going to challenge me, challenge Watershed Management Group, and challenge yourself, if you're going to do it this weekend, you can call tomorrow. They open at seven, and by tomorrow is what Wednesday, and by Friday afternoon they're going to be you're going to be mark the property, your house. Just tell them that you're marking the whole property. Uh, that way you don't mess. And they come, you don't need to see them. They mark, they send you emails. Yes, clear, mark. We already marked the gas line, that type of thing. And they mark from the right of way, meaning the alley or the street to the meter. Uh, all right, so that way you have an idea how your water is coming into your house, the electricity, if it is underground, uh, the gas, that type of thing. All right, uh, thank you for that. Uh, but if you're challenging us, challenging you this weekend, call tomorrow, first thing in the morning. Uh, 
So the overflow is very, very important, is where the water is going next. And somewhere that you don't wanna create problems for yourself, problem for the neighbor, or problems for the community. In this case, the water is going to go out. So this is a gate in here. And it's going to go out of that gate and it's going to go into, a, uh, into another uh, common property right there. That needs a lot of attention, actually. <laughs> All right, next next slide. Uh, grading. There you go. Uh, I think that's a video actually. So let's let's play. Let's see how it plays. So the grading of the slope of the edges of the of the basin. Uh, array can do so many wonderful things. Right. So I love the rakes because it creates very nice slope. That's it. Uh, probably you missed the video. <laughs> Uh, so there you go, let's stop there. Um, so we created a very nice gentle slope in here. All right? Sometimes we call it a 33 degree angle. Uh, you put your arm like that, that's a 90 degree, 45, 33, somewhere in here. That's the angle of repose. That's a natural angle that is going to not erode that much. So we wanna reach that angle. Uh, 33 degrees, three to one slope, but that means it's three, um, three wide, one high, all right, depending on your dimensions. So you can tell here that with the excess soil uh, that we excavated from the basin, we create a little burn. This, you can actually, after the first rain, you're not going to see that. It's very shallow, it's like two, three inches, you can walk on top of it. You, it, nothing is going to, you're not going to trip on that. So it's a nice little bump, right? And, and we cover it with the additional uh, rot, uh, gravel. But the idea of this burn, remember that we circle here, that was an opportunity, water moving in that direction. So what we're doing is guiding the water from here more directly into the basin here. So instead, we have two arrows at the beginning. There was one arrow going in the basin and one arrow going to, to this gate, all right? So with this little burn, we're guiding additional water to the basin. So we're having already two sources of water for this basin. And we utilize the soil that we excavate from here, all right? So pay attention to what you can do with the soil that you excavate, all right? And we use it here along the fence, and we use it here to create an additional berm, no more than four inches in this case, in height. It's like a one foot wide. And then we walk on top of it, so that's how we compact that berm, all right? Um, so there we are covering the, the berm with the gravel that was already there, so that way it's kind of camouflaged in the landscape. And that's pretty much it. So we're guaranteeing additional water to the basin. Okay, we excavate the basin, we send in water to the basin. Why are we excavating a basin? We excavate in a basin for several purposes in here. We're infiltrating water, yes. Uh, and we are planting some plants that we like. Uh, we highly recommend and use native plants of the Sonoran Desert. And occasionally we use adapted plants uh, of some other regions, all right? There are some other acacias that are really, really good uh, and, and that come from Australia. And that's okay, they are not invasive, but we're not recommending that. We are trying to be, um, to honor the plants of the Sonoran Desert. If we wanna be extreme to that, we can use the plants within your radius of uh, 50 miles around your house. That's the best bet for your plants to establish, to thrive, because they are in the, within the region of, the, of your biome between the, your rain, within your wind, within, so those are the familiar plants that you see in that radius, all right? You can take a little farther, like some grasses, uh, uh, they, they like to, I like to experiment with different plants, 
from the Sonoran Desert in my rain garden here at home, all right? Uh, but stay, stay native, I like to say that. Stay native of the Sonoran Desert, be native of the Sonoran Desert, and you're guaranteeing some success or a lot of success to your garden, to your rain garden. And you'll be amazed how many flowers you can have from the Sonoran Desert. In this case, it is a small basin, and that's where you can complicate your life or not. <laughs> it just depends what you want to do. You can measure how much water are you getting in that basin, all right? So then you can measure how much water that plant is going to get from that basin. And that's going to tell you, whoa, I can maybe plant another plant because I have additional water. Or you can just leave it like that. You can just have your basin, have your two plants, and see how they do. But you're going to wait two, three years. Well, they're doing really good. Well, maybe I'm going to put another plant in here. That's, I measure things in my house, but in general terms. How much water am I getting from the roof? How much water am I getting from the landscape? And how much water am I getting from the depth? Am I going to get on these basins on that depth? All right? And then by observation, I observe my plants. I observe how they're doing. Uh, some die because they were from higher elevation in Mount Lemon, for example. That grass is never going to make it here. Well, I tried it. It didn't make it. Uh, so there is another grass here from, uh, from, from here. All right? And that grass is great. So pay attention to that. The planting, let's go to the next one. That's part of the fun, that's part of the beauty, that's part of the aesthetics, that's part of the purpose of your, of your basing. Uh, we like to say, try to imitate nature in your basing, all right? Remember your radius of so 50, 50 miles. So the cacti that you're going to see within 50 miles of Tucson, usually they are on a slope, right? Well, or, or far away from a creek or far away from a wash. You're never going to see cacti uh, right in the, in the middle of an arroyo, right? Because they don't like that. They're not good for that. They are good for higher elevations than the creek, for slopes, for a, a sandy, a gravel, clay soils, right? Pay attention to your surroundings. The riparian trees, that means trees closer or in, uh, in, in, the, in the channel of the arroyo, like a desert willow, they like to be inundated once in a while, all mm. right? So that's okay to have a plant. Joaquin, mm. related to that, sorry, we've got a few questions. I think um, somebody earlier had a question related to um, building a basin um, near a already established tree. And then we've also got a question about citrus trees as well. Mm -hmm. um, where there is an already established native tree, like a mesquite, like a, a palo verde, and I'm seeing those in my window here, uh, like an ironwood, acacias, um, you can build a basin around them, all right? Or close to them. Close meaning maybe not closer than five, four feet. Right? Because if you get too close, then you're going to start cutting a lot of roots. But if you are four or five feet away, that tree that is already established is going to benefit a lot from that basin. And the roots are eventually going to find that water. Actually, we recommend when you're building your basin and establishing a tree, the tree to be like maybe two, three feet away from, uh, from the basin if it's not a riparian tree. If it is like a mesquite, ironwood, uh, they, they like that, all right? Uh, for, uh, for a fruit tree, uh, closer to the basin, but that's when you start looking for additional sources of water, all right? So I will recommend a, a rain garden basin, yes, meaning harvesting the, ra the rain, but also if you have, pay attention to the, to, to the um, the laundry machine, for example. Can you bring water from your laundry machine to that basin? Right there, you're creating a hybrid system. You're creating a rain garden, but also you're creating a, land, a laundry to landscape garden that you can utilize 
uh, gray water in that basin. If you have a fruit tree, that would benefit a lot from that. And that's a cultural change because you need to change the soaps that you use uh, for your laundry. So that way you're not harming uh, the soil or polluting the soil or the plants. All right, pay attention to the, to the soaps that you use on gray water with no sodium. That's one of the bigger no's. And there are some other elements there. For that, we have a class. And for that, we also have some teaching moments at Watershed Management Group for additional sources of water besides the rain that there are quite actually a few that, that we can tap on it. Mm -hmm. Perfect, and we've got a few more questions. Um, so, uh, so the first one is what about wildflowers? And then the second one, um, James Smith has uh, some basins that already created on his property. He's got lots of cactus and native plants on the perimeter of the basins. Um, and some are aligned with rocks, but the only plants that are growing inside the basins are some sort of aloe um, here and there. Will native plants successfully fill in the basin over time? Some will, yes. And, and, uh, for that, and, and those are experiments, uh, we're always experimenting and observing things. I would recommend to get uh, a native seed search to get a mix of native seeds. Um, uh, if you like flowers, there is a mix for that, a wildflower mix. I would highly recommend to get that. There is another mix, which is a combination of flowers and grasses uh, and additional shrubs which they call a monsoon mix. Uh, that, that's, that's a really nice mix to have. Throw some of those mixes, throw some of those seeds in there, in, in, in the basins that you already have, and you'll be pleasantly surprised, uh, depending if it is a monsoon or a, or a, a spring bloomer, uh, you can be surprised anytime within six months, the first monsoon, or a year or two. In my case, it took two years for the native seeds to start uh, uh, coming up in my house. Uh, but I was, I was patient, but my front yard right now looks all kinds of beautiful wildflowers that I have. And I just planted the water. And, and some plants, but we also scattered some wildflower seeds. Um, so I highly recommend that if, if, if you're not in a hurry. You already planted the water, which is good. Bring additional wildflower seeds to that. Uh, yes, I can just see that there are some native grasses seeds as well. You can create your own mixes with wildflowers, native grasses, monsoon mix, mix it all together, and that's a pleasant surprise to have. Uh, and, so, yeah. Go ahead. I was gonna say, uh, we are getting quite a few uh, different questions from so many people, which is great. Um, and I am realizing the time. So uh, Joaquin um, and all of you who have questions, if you would be able to stay about 10 minutes after uh, 6.30, that would be great so that we can answer all of those questions. Um, so we do have a few more steps to get through for you all to be able to make your basins. Yeah, if, uh, if people stay here, I'll stay with them. Um, this is a great opportunity. So yes, I can stay 10, 15 minutes longer. Great. Uh, but um, maybe we could, I could answer some of those questions as we go. So let's see what we did uh, with these plants that we planted in this six foot basin uh, with Lauren. So we selected, or Lauren selected two plants, uh, and we placed them in different positions. And we liked the way it looked like that. Sometimes I, I do that a lot. I, I have my own design, and sometimes I put the circle where the plant is going to go, but then I have the plant. And I didn't like where I was going to. Why? Because it just doesn't look right, okay? So you have that freedom of select the side where that plant is going to go. So we put them there because that's where we like them. All right. And we were respecting, they are on the slope of the basin here and in here. All right. That's okay. All right. This is a shallow basin. It will get inundated up to here and then the overflow is over here. Uh, so this water 
um, it's going to be very hard for this plant to be inundated. That's not going to happen. So that's why we put it close to the basin, but not in the bottom of the basin. Hopefully I'm making sense. Uh, we didn't have a grass. If we have a grass, we'll put it right there in the middle of that basin, the deepest area of the basin. Grasses love that, right? So I think there is a video next on how we planted those two plants. The dog was a great help. Um, I'm breaking the roots, uh, the root ball of, of that plant before I put it permanently on the ground. That's, you saw me with that rock. Um, and then I flip it a little bit uh, just to see the direction of, of the plant. Uh, how does it look? Is it straight? I, with, the, with the handle of, of that shovel, I compacted the, the, the soil around the plant. We don't want air pockets close to the plant because uh, the roots can dry up. So that's why we, 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 we tamp it with the handle of the, of the shovel. And luckily, Lauren had some rocks lying around. Hey, can we use the rocks? Sure. So we use the rock to, to bring protection to the plant, but also create a very nice geographical future in there. So it's kind of a little terrace for the plant. And we created a watering hole around the plant thanks to those, to those uh, rocks. All right, took advantage of some rocks that were lying around. Can we use them? Yes, all right. Um, I love working with rock. You can do so many things. And that's the other plants, similar things uh, in there. Uh, we created a watering hole. Um, it's not a full hole, I should say that. The hole is just like a half moon here, maybe a luna, because water is going to come from the fence and this little plant is going to harvest some of it. So it has a tiny little berm on the side of the basin before water enters the basin. So that plant is a smart plant because it already has its own watering hole that this fence is going to send in this direction. Same for this one here, all right? So I think that's how we finish that basin, uh-huh. Yeah. Really quickly, Joaquin, um, do you have a suggestion for a place to get some big rocks? Yes, um, it can, it are several. Uh, when I say rip rock rocks, it's anywhere between four to 18 inches of a rock, all right? The ones you saw there, they were like six, eight inches. Uh, those ones, and it depends how much do you need. Uh, if, if you need a truck load, if you have a pickup truck, you go to Sonoran Landscape, which is on Aina and I-10, somewhere in there. That's for the business, Sonoran Landscape, they have all kinds of rocks, they load the truck for you, and a half a ton, I know that because my little truck, that's all it can hold, is $16, and it's a lot of rocks. So $16 for a bunch of rocks, that would be like for, to cover that whole basin. Uh, beautiful rocks. If you want more rocks and bigger rocks like a boulder, a boulder is too bigger than two feet, all right? Two to three feet, that's those, those become to be expensive. A three by three boulder, it costs like $90, just one of them. And you can go to Dorado Rock, that's a good source. They bring it to you. You're going to need a machine, uh, uh, an excavator, a backhoe to move those boulders. You cannot move them by yourself. They're heavy. Don't put them in your truck. They can break your truck. Uh, there are videos for that. Uh, and I've seen trucks being broken by boulders because they just dumped them in there. Uh, and the operator told them, no, it's not going to, ah, just put it there. And it broke. Um, <laughs> and Dorado Rock, um, uh, Churchman, uh, 
uh, Churchman, that's the name of, of, uh, of, of another rock place, right? And so, but a good ton of uh, rib wrap, it costs around $25, right? For a ton of rock. And that's a lot of rocks. Uh, and boulders, again, uh, anywhere between 50 to, just depends on the size, $50 all the way to $300 for a huge rock. Uh, mulch and water. Uh, we didn't mulch this basin, but I built a basin in my house. I challenged myself. That's how I finished in my house and with two cups of coffee. And uh, let's go to, so that basin doesn't have mulch. Similar to uh, Lawrence basin with no mulch. So the final look of the basin is the next slide. That's the mulch I already had around my house. So I mulched the basin, and you can tell that the cat, Negu, loves that. It's just lying there in the middle of the basin on top of the mulch. So that's the final look of the basin. With mulch, with, this has a grass in the, in the bottom of the basin. This has a hot berry a little higher from the basin and three feet from the corner. And it has some, um, it's not an agave, but it's a succulent plant that is a little higher than the slope of the basin right there. So that's how I finished this basin. And I'll take advantage of this. We are going to send you, I think, um, a thank you note and you're going to get a surprise. That's why I'm challenging you. You're going to get a surprise on how Christian, my wife, and I dug this basin in two hours. We took a break because we encountered surprises there. But in two hours, this thing was done. All right? And you're going to get a link where you can see a five-minute video on from start to finish how it was done with the help of the cat. All right? Um, so I think the next one... It's some announcements. Oh, we hope for rain. We always hoping for rain. Uh, uh, this was in Tucson. For some of us, the summer was really poor in rain. In my house, I only got 0.6 inches, uh, not even a three quarter of an inch of rain. Uh, so I don't know how much you got, but we're always hoping for rain. But that's, that's done before. I think we broke the record for heat in some sections this summer, and we also broke the record of less rain this summer. Then again, it's 2020. That doesn't mean it's going to stay like that. Uh, things will change. Uh, uh, so anyway, let's hope for rain. Um, next one. Yes. So great walking. You are right. The next one is our announcements. Um, do, 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 do. Let me just look at the time. So we've got about five minutes. So um, we will definitely get to your questions. So let's start with a few of those as well. Um, so can you put grasses and riparian plants inside the basin if it gets a laundry to landscape water? Yes, you can. <laughs> okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, I will suggest if you haven't taken the laundry, uh, the gray water rebate class uh, with us, with Watershed Management Group, I will suggest to register on that. Even if you're not thinking of, of putting up, uh, using gray water, but at least it gives you ideas on, on the potential of gray water and basins. Uh, uh, and rain garden. So I will suggest take that class. It's an hour and a half class and you get the rebate from Tucson Water if you are Tucson Water client. Awesome. And then a few more questions before we'll jump into announcements and then go back to the questions. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, I lost it. Um, and I apologize you all, if I missed your question, please uh, retype it in the chat. Um, there were great questions today, so thank you all. Um, oh, there we go. 
can you put um, seeds over top of mulch or do you put seeds under mulch? It's that, yes. Uh, it can go either way. Um, if you put them on top of mulch, I would highly recommend to spray that mulch with water. So the seed will find its way into the ground. If, if you have uh, the energy, I highly recommend to move the mulch and put the seed <laughs> and then bring the mulch back, all right? So, and, but just sprinkle those seeds directly into the soil, remove the mulch first, sprinkle those seeds and bring the mulch back. Uh, you are guaranteeing more germination that way because the soil will get uh, more humidity. I suppose as the seed traveling through the mulch as water gets into that basin, right? Awesome. And um, as we've got about four minutes left here, um, do, 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 do. Let's answer a few more questions. Um, how, uh, what are your suggestions, Joaquin, um, and to uh, build a basin when the landscaping is a little old and established and above the street? Uh, and I'm assuming you wanna take, for that question, you wanna take water from the street, I guess. Um, and <laughs> that's going to be a lot of work, a lot of soil moving. Um, and that's going to be tough if, if your landscape is higher than the street. Uh, it's, it's a lot of regrading, it's a lot of reshaping. Uh, maybe look for other opportunities, um, all right? And so a curb cut is not going to be for you in, for your house. Um, Maybe the opportunity is on a park, maybe the opportunity is on another, somebody else's right away. Or maybe the opportunity is from your roof or from your landscape before the water gets into outside your property, right? Uh, so I will pay attention for that before looking into the street. Awesome. 